Heavenly Father, we come to you in this hour, asking for your guidance and protection to our virtual gathering today. We thank you for the gift of life, the gift of family, the gift of work, and the gift of friendship. We thank you for this great opportunity to bring us together in this session as brothers and sisters. Bless the committee, the facilitator, and the attendees of this gathering. May we continue to value and appreciate the true essence and meaning of life with the help of your grace. And as we go along to our discussion today, we humbly pray that you would deepen our understanding. Lord, enlighten us and give us wisdom every day. Forgive us for our shortcomings and remind us to always be mindful of the things we do in life. We offer our life and our decisions to you, O Lord. May this gathering today create a memorable experience and a fruitful outcome. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and our Savior. Amen. Okay, maayong hapon sa tanan. Uh, today is Tuesday and our topic for this afternoon is all about issues and concerns of generative AI. Together with me is uh, Assistant Professor Professor Alpi uh, Q. Arcelo um, who will present to you the different issues and concerns as part of, a, a part of the university's effort on uh, generative AI integration in teaching, learning, operations, and management. Our agenda for this afternoon is very straightforward. We will present to you the issues and concerns in relation to our framework. We know that currently the university is doing its effort of institutionalizing our framework that focuses on two areas, teaching and learning and operations and management. It was also presented that under teaching and learning, we are hoping to integrate artificial intelligence in terms of content, pedagogy, research, and assessment. In terms of operations and management, we are looking at potential and opportunity for artificial intelligence to integrate it as a tool for reference, as a tool for writing assistance, organizing, and uh, reporting. We know also that artificial intelligence or generative AI, to be more specific, is also equated with so many issues, concerns, ethical considerations, and other uh, technical considerations. Literature is telling us that while we are initiating the integration process, we should also develop or prepare each stakeholders this kind of revolution that requires a proactive approach. This approach specifically should address both technical and ethical considerations. Literature like UNESCO mandate everyone, especially in the education sector, the calls to inherently for a human-centered approach to artificial intelligence. With this, our objective this afternoon is to articulate very specific issues or and concerns and present to you mitigations and moving forward on addressing addressing this kind of issues and concerns. Alfie will start the discussion on focusing content, pedagogy, and assessment. Thank you, Sir Dave. 
So just let me also give you the outline of our presentation. So um, Sir Dave has mentioned that uh, it is anchored all actually on the framework components, which are um, um, pedagogy, content, assessment, research, reference, writing assistance, and organization and reporting. No? So uh, we will also try to have a brief uh, discussion of what um, composes or comprises these uh, frame uh, these uh, component framework. And then we go into the issues and concerns. So there are of, uh, a myriad of issues and concerns, especially when we talk about uh, generative AI in education. But let's just go into the the very, very important ones or the very essential ones. And of course, we will also give you uh, solutions and mitigations. And uh, what do we look forward? What do we need to do other than what we know as solutions and mitigations? It will also be given by Sir Dave later on. So let me start with uh, content no? so um, let's talk about issues and concerns of the use of generative ai when we make or create content and when we say content we talk about the things that we do as teachers no? or the things that we actually uh, prepare especially in our courses or in our classes so we have our curriculum or our syllabus and then we have of course our instructional materials our lesson plans or learning plans uh, we have also our it also includes actually assessments like for example those uh, instructions the the questions that we have those are part of content and then we have um we have also uh, scaffolding activities, uh, things that they need to, the, the, the instructions and the procedures that we also prepare. Um, at, at the same time, no, as students, they also contribute to um, the content or the content or the body of knowledge that we are uh, being facilitators when it comes to the courses. So the, the students will, will also have um, will also have a content in the form of student presentations, uh, reports, student assignments, and projects. And of course, they are also part of the content when it comes to discussions, or maybe you have done online forums with, with your class. So they are part of content. So uh, what are the things that uh, become concerns and issues when it comes to uh, content generation uh, using uh, generative AI. So first is, first and foremost, no, is content and our content quality and accuracy. So the quality and accuracy of generated educational content may vary affecting the learning experience no so it should be like that i mean the traditional way of actually painstakingly um preparing content should always be like that because we would want to we would want to really hit what we would want our learners to to achieve and learn no so uh, in here ensuring that ai generated materials meet educational standards is a challenge because we we all know that um we we are not even sure of where it comes from no when we, we when we make use of that one so it's it's already a challenge thinking about it that we can uh we could we could achieve content quality and accuracy if we make use of generative ai so um, a concrete example for, for example, content quality concerns in the use of generative AI is, um, say, the creation of materials or resources, no, and um, they say they may lack accuracy or depth, and it leads to potential challenges in delivering high quality uh, educational content because um, whatever it gives us, we if 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 we rely solely on that and um, um, whatever it gives us, no, uh, when when it comes to lecture notes, tutorials, uh, maybe videos, um, it really affects the accuracy and of course the suitability for our topic or for the purpose of the topic, no, and um, very. Uh, a very good example of this one is how we generate our lecture notes. 
no? So our lecture notes. So for example, we decide to use an AI tool to generate lecture notes for our course. And then we input a set of keywords and topics relevant to the subject matter. So that's what we, what, what we do. And then uh, the AI generated content is a set of the ones that we have actually, so we get, so we get it from, from that AI content platform. But in the use of the classroom, we use it as lecture notes, unaware of the inaccuracies and shortcomings in the content. Meaning, no, if we didn't contextualize it, no, so we just really um, copy pasted it. So this is actually very good um, content already because it has very good language. It was accurate. Uh, it was actually. Um, um, say organized well when it comes to language, pero it doesn't hit or it doesn't actually uh, hit the target when it comes to uh, the learnings that we'd want our, our students or the learners. No, so uh, that would be that would be very that that is actually is still an issue at the same time a concern for us. And the second one is so um, yes, this is actually something that's controversial, especially during ODL, uh, plagiarism, and the um, I could I could remember during the first few maybe weeks that uh, ChatGPT had uh, appeared. Um, plagiarism was actually uh, an issue and maybe a challenge for for many of uh, the teachers. No, so. Um, if you look at if you look at plagiarism, you might say it's a challenge for us detecting it, but it could also be something that um, is a challenge for us to resist the temptation of uh, plagiarizing content. No, because um, most of us uh, there are really a lot of good good content already uh, uh, over there over the internet or AI could also provide us, but. Um, when it comes to this one, no, this is actually something that we shouldn't just look. Uh, we should we shouldn't just look at our students committing it, but sometimes, no, we might be able to. Uh, we might be able to commit it also in a sense that we haven't. Uh, we have we we have been overlooking things because of our maybe we are. We are into AI, no? So uh, let us just also try to see how we can also uh, try to uh, mitigate, no? Uh, both both ways of committing plagiarism or um, um, plagiarism as is uh, how our students and how we can also prevent ourselves from, and of course, giving solution to not letting our students um, uh, commit plagiarism. Then another content uh, content concern is the loss of diversity in perspectives. So how does this? What does this mean? No, um, especially no, especially you could actually you could actually feel this one. Um, I could um, you could feel this one especially if you have like an activity and um an open forum activity in my soul, and then it would need like. For them, uh, it's an a, it's a discussion. They have to reply, so on and so forth. It would have been. Uh, I know that most of us have the intention to really um, give them the give them the opportunity to at least voice out or um, offer their um, knowledge about certain topics. Yet uh, it becomes um, it becomes uh, too homogenized. No, when it comes to when they have or when when students or uh, we also use uh, uh, we also use um, AI in generating them. No, so it we it's uh, it actually also um, it Morashag it doesn't it doesn't like it lacks the personalization in a sense, robotic in a sense, um, homogenized as I have mentioned, because um, it 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 gives you pabalik balik answers, no. So uh, if you that if the teacher is not not really inclined, but is not used to is not used to making use of say AI in um, try uh, in or hasn't uh, explored AI. 
uh, the teacher would not really be affected with the answers to of the students when it comes to that one no um but uh you, we could also do some mitigations later so i will also discuss that one and then we have here another one um student creativity and critical thinking so this is also maybe a result of over reliance to ai not to the point that everything they would want to have an answer with should come from AI. So uh, in there, no, there is, of course, loss of originality. By the way, these two are more or less connected. So there's loss of originality when it comes to how they, they um, present their, their facts or how they present their, um, their content. And of course, um, reduce critical thinking in their side so we are not letting them practice uh, critical thinking and higher order thinking skills when they do that so um, they it, it becomes actually uh, a deep concern no? it, a deep concern for us because that is something that we wouldn't want no we wouldn't want our students to to lack when it comes to critical thinking it should it should be it should be cultivated and we should be be very good facilitators to it. So the use of AI, no, there should be there should be some ways that AI could facilitate critical thinking, not um, lessen critical thinking, especially um, in how we present our content to our students. Another another set of content uh, issues and concerns are ethical content generation. So meaning, um, be, uh, this is con in connection with quality and accuracy as well. No, um, if we if we totally trust and rely on um, um, AI A AI when it comes to our content, then uh, there could we could be misinformed as well. No, we could be misinformed. Um, we shouldn't be we shouldn't be um, just looking at how attractive it is or the multimedia or the the infographic is so attractive that makes us uh, really would want to use it but it should actually have factual information in it so um that would mean also no that would mean also um we can have um it could really uh, harm academic integrity. So we have been, uh, over the last two years, uh, we have been discussing academic integrity also um, in, in our university. So this is something that uh, that is a concern and an issue when we use um, generative AI. And of course, data security and privacy. No? So even if we have our own set of policies when it comes to the university has its own data privacy um, policies no but still it's a concern uh, especially if we use this in making our content no so um if we if we make use of um if we make use of uh, ai powered proctoring tools no especially in uh, assessments but later on maybe i could expound on that one no so um Take for example the one that we have uh, we had during ODL. No presentations were done by students at the comforts of their bedrooms. No, so um, we would have to say that we have to uh, we would have to see them. No, see them on cam, so on and so forth. But we are actually also um, um, we there are some privacy concerns and security concerns also on their side when when they are making a, when when they are doing that or they are exposed to that kind of um, issue or concern no and uh, data privacy and this is also something that um, I have um, when it's come, when it comes to data privacy and concerns the more that they interact with uh, AI the more that it gets information from us. So that is that actually also breaks uh, data privacy and security. So we have to also regulate what we input or what we yes what we ask or what we input AI to do because it actually also gets some of uh, our information and our data. Okay, so we're now at the last portion of content. By the way, before I before I um uh, before I proceed with the last 
uh, issue and concern. Uh, we have actually had a session on content and pedagogy. I think that was in October 11. No, so if you'd want, if you are curious of the, if you are curious of the um, platforms or the applications that will uh, that are uh, that will aid us when it comes to doing content and pedagogy. Um, using generative AI, then then you might as well also uh, look for the video there in um, the YouTube channel and uh, the Soul YouTube channel. Now, so going back to the last, uh, going back to the last uh, issue and concern when it comes to the creation of content using AI. Uh, take for example, so humanization and engagement. So this is really something that, um, this is something that is relatable, especially uh, if you are familiar with content coming from AI. No, take for example an AI-generated video that comes to robotic. No, that it loses that human touch to the content. Um, if any one of you have actually made use or have um, explored deep fake technology when it comes to the use of um, Videos, no videos. Let's say videos because it also has images and such. Um, it becomes we become yeah maybe we become better looking in there in the video or something. But um, it it loses that personal touch. No, when that human connection is lost. No, especially with our content, it becomes less motivating for our students to learn from our content. No, um, we have to have it. Though we we are using AI or we are using technology, there will all we should always have that personal touch, no humanization and engagement, no. So um, we should not always rely on all those um, high end AI to give us or to produce us uh, these contents because we this could they might look high tech for us, but they might not be the real content that would um, that would help or facilitate our learners um, way of um, acquiring knowledge or the skills. So those are some of the so those are just some of the issues and concerns regarding regarding content. Um, we have just chosen the real uh, the ones that are really very um, important to discuss. So um, we, let's proceed with pedagogy. No, so for pedagogy, for us, uh, by the way, uh, a nutshell uh, on content solutions and mitigation. So uh, later on, I will just give like a list for all three, for all for um, content pedagogy and uh, and assessment. But for now, let me just uh, give you this uh, for solutions and mitigation. So in a nutshell, in order for us to tackle when it comes to content related challenges and issues, it should be a collective effort for us in the college, in the department, no? So um, our deans, our principals, department chairs, subject coordinators, and educators, teachers. So we have to meticulously select um, those and assess and augment AI um, AI generated materials. So it's really it's really something uh, dili pwedeng uh, ang usa ka lang, no? So it should be an a collective effort. And we have to establish ethical principles to adhere to to college or classroom norms, no? Like we could in uh, I know everyone has like a classroom policy, no? Especially now that we're back to um in person classes. So we might we might as well also, especially if um, our uh, if our outputs no are uh, content uh, when it comes to content, it contributes to the content to of the of the course or the subject. Then we also need to have or to have a clause or need to actually have a policy about the use of AI of AI or the use of a generative AI. So we, we, we should also have that one. And then uh, implementing quality control measures in the use of generative AI also are crucial in order for uh, to actually to develop the advantages of generative AI in in our university in Siliman. And at the same time, no, it, uh, it alleviates 
these issues and concerns or at least answer no answer or prevent some issues and concerns when it comes to content creation so we proceed now to pedagogy so pedagogy is not new to us because all of us have our own way of how to teach no or how to uh, convey the learning to our to our learners so um in here we have we, we the scope of our uh, key components of pedagogy here especially with the concerns are those um included in in our teaching methods so have we used uh, ai in in our teaching methods how about in assessment and feedback but that assess again assessment and feedback will follow pedagogy and then we have to have our own classroom management no so our our uh, our method of teaching should also include how we organize or manage our classroom or our course. And then we have um, integration of digital technology in, in, our, in our pedagogy. And inclusivity and diversity, meaning we have to also look into uh, inclusivity and diversity. So everyone should be able to have access to whatever we're using, technology we're using, be it AI or any other digital technology. And then um, because we're talking of uh, 21st century learning again, so it's student-centered learning. So student-centered learning would mean they could also have um, um, be part uh, in the in the use of this digital technology and of course AI. And social cultural factors as well is also considered when it comes to all these concerns in pedagogy. Okay, so the first one is um, personalization versus standardization. No, So this is something that is actually even before AI came or even before digital technology came, uh, this has been like, always a debate personalization versus standardization because we would always want to be to have a personalized uh way of uh teaching no um but having like 40 40 people or 40 learners in a class uh, how could this be done it could be challenging standardization okay so standardization but it could be something uh, that means um, students cannot actually achieve the same set of standards, no? So concerns and considerations in here. So the personalized approach allows students to learn at their own speed, addressing their unique strengths and weaknesses. However, it could be challenging to ensure that uh, students uh, reach a common baseline of proficiency no no and um when it comes to this one personalization let's not forget so we will have to relate that one to how we could use personalization in our my soul no so we have what we call our personalized learning design no so um it's not good to also be too addicted to that one because that would lead to over personalization also no but it's a very good thing especially uh, especially just for reminders or maybe when it comes to uh, submissions of assignments something like that and it becomes personalized because we are really we are really uh, making use of their names uh, when we address them using the PLD at the same time we could also have um we could also have a personalized feedback when it comes to our our uh, assignments or our um our even quizzes no in 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 uh in our in my soul so there and then the concern when it comes to standardization is yes we are we are assured that all students are uh, cover the same materials making it easier to evaluate and compare their prog progress, but again, effect, uh, less effective because uh, students with diverse learning needs, no? We all know that uh, we have, our learners have different styles of, of learning. They have different needs as well. So potentially would lead them to achieving less, or maybe there's an achievement gap, no? So uh, to address this concern, we often seek a middle ground. So hopefully, no, hopefully there could be a balance. So let's look at the mitigations later on of how we could be able to do um, a balance for that one. And then another one is 
there is that loss of teacher-student connection. So it's similar to uh, when we do, uh, when we make use of AI to generate content, for sure, this is pedagogy. So this is actually an engagement between the teacher and our learners. So there's that loss of teacher-student connection. No, if we just make use of uh, everything is digitized. Uh, everything, all of the, all of the, um, all of the uh, content is there. The videos are there, so on and so forth. Uh, when you, when you chat to me, you are actually answered by a bot, chat bot. No, so that makes it more, um, less personalized or na loss of teacher student connection in in many ways no in many ways and in many research when there is that teacher student connection engagement is lost no um learning learning is stagnated or learning doesn't really develop or learning is doesn't come to full completion because of that one cuz um that's why no we have to be also very um we also have to be very confident that the human touch in learning is still very essential. So uh, that one, that becomes a very, very, very big issue when it comes to pedagogy, no? loss of teacher and student connection. Then we go to equity and access. So when we say equity and access, uh, AI-driven tools must be designed with accessibility in mind to ensure that all students, including those with uh, disabilities, can benefit from them. So as a teacher, we have to have that kind of mindset that when we use this technology or when we use this AI to our students or for our students, it should be accessed by everyone. No? So maybe we, we could make use of AI in a sense that for multimedia purposes, it could have Multimedia purposes, meaning it could have different types of files for different types of, of learners. Now, in equity, not all students may have equal access to the technology and resources required to benefit from generative AI. So that actually exacerbates uh, educational inequality. No? And the next one is teacher training and adaptation. So in here, no? Um, this one is quite blatant, is quite a blatant issue and concern for all of us, no? Uh, since why? It branches to different concerns, no? Um, like for example, good for the for all uh, for everyone, fourteen participants here. Congratulations because you are actually open-minded to these kinds of things. I'm not saying they are not, but um, teacher training and adaptation would really be very helpful for us. Um, this uh, adaptation in teacher training ensures that educators can um, hitch the full potential of generative AI while, while maintaining our role as facilitators and uh, mentors in, uh, in the learning process. No, We need to be trained because we cannot use generative AI tools that help us to combat academic integrity if we are not trained well no if we continuously practice being narrow-minded about it then we become the reason for our students to be ahead of us maybe in producing ai generated outputs without us correcting them so that would be a very sad situation you know so we we are we are not doing this for for us to be uh for us to be actually um famous or something, but we really want um, everyone, especially the teachers, to, to also be at par when it comes to how we can mitigate um, the use of generative AI in a bad way, especially in education. Then we have curricular design. No? So uh, making of our learning plans, lesson plans, and even um, even the design of a syllabus, no. So that's why there's an there should be an update in our syllabus because uh, other activities or learning activities may not be uh, may not be totally the one that is needed, no, or it's left behind because we have not updated it. So um, why is it part of pedagogy? Because this is where we uh, this is a source of where we have to um, adjust our 
teaching methods, our teaching styles, and of course, how we handle our class, no? using, of course, no, we're talking here with the use of digital technology and generative AI. So uh, while AI can bring significant benefits to curriculum design, there's also that uh, potential concern regarding its impact on the nature and focus of education. No, Because if you'd want it, sure, it could give you a, a curriculum right there and then, but it doesn't actually meet also the objectives or even the university's um, um, objectives and missions because it's totally it's totally far out from what we what we want to achieve by what it has given us when we, we when we would want to have um this one for our curricular design and that this one is our long term educational impact no so maybe you have felt this kind of i don't know fear but yes we have because because generative AI or the or the development of technology becomes more uncertain to us. No, um, in twenty twenty, it was more of um, doing everything digital so that we could uh, pull it through with um, be, um, doing classes online. This time, this there's another challenge which is uh, generative ai do we have to adapt to them do we have to do we have to learn to learn about things ab um, about generative ai yes because uh, these are just uh, phases of our phases of our uh, learning journey learning teaching journey um, in in the in the university there are still more to come no so and we don't know what they are so that becomes a that becomes having to have long-term educational impact for us. So there. <clears throat> okay. So when it comes to pedagogy, so again, no, again, deans, departments, department chairs, teachers, and the college as a whole must collaborate in order for us to establish best practices ethical guidelines so we could actually share no share what works in our class what works in a different class so we could actually also uh, apply it in our own then we have to ensure the responsible use of generative ai to avoid misuse especially in how we teach no so um if in content there is like a policy no here in uh, pedagogy, we might want to have our checklist on what uh, we can do and what we can't do in the use of AI, especially in pedagogy. And then we have to align AI technologies with our educational goals. So that's actually something that's uh, very good. No, So we don't just let our students or learners explore um, AI just so, no? It should be something that uh, you could uh, make use of. Like for me, no? Uh, I have let them make use of uh, generative AI in making rubrics, no? So uh, in that in that way, no, there is really actually a purpose in making use of generative AI. So this is necessary to navigate this uh, mga concerns, and we could capitalize on the potential benefits of generate generative AI, especially in our courses or especially in our um, school. No, so uh, with that one, no, with that one, let us proceed. I hope no, dili pata overwhelmed because there are still a lot more. Um, this is just like the the very superficial parts of generative AI concerns and issues. So let's proceed with. Um, assessment so everyone has also uh, maybe can relate when it comes to the use of assessment um, generative AI tools no so um, well when we talk of the assessments we talk of our learning assessments the drills maybe the scaffoldings uh, formative assessments as well and then summative assessment can we also make use of AI uh, generative AI on them on them? And then authentic assessment. These are applications of what they have learned, uh, applications to certain scenarios and to real life situations. Uh, can 
AI be used in this one? And of course, performance tasks, no? So um, we, we don't just rely on summative assessments, but we also have to have performance assessments. So how are these uh, how are these types of assessments? How are the issues and concerns when we make use of um, generative AI? So for the first one is bias and unfairness. So how come this becomes a concern, especially in um, generative, Less present in automated, uh, like for example, essay scoring systems. No? So essays. Um, let me just uh, let me just um highlight that in ours in in my soul, we actually manually check our essay activities. No, so in a quiz or in a um in assignments, we manually check them. No, so but there are actually essay scoring systems, meaning. Um, we could just paste the 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 work of our students, and then they will be the one to grade. So that actually creates uh, bias and um, unfairness. No, so uh, in in that way, uh, AI evaluates um, evaluates the or grades. No, the the output of our students and. When it comes to this one, there are actually it also is connected to validity and reliability because um, the uh, AI's ability to assess the content and meaning of, for example, essays, no, may be limited because it may struggle to evaluate maybe the the real arguments or creativity, no, which are essential components of writing quality. Now, uh, another concrete example of bias and fairness. Here, uh, here is um, one student who is not into using AI, you know, not into using AI, but is really good in writing essay. Okay. Now, this, es this essay, essay uh, generating or say grading uh, platforms tend to follow certain, certain writing styles and vocabulary. Now, if those who have been, who have been using, you no, know, using those, uh, those um, technologies, students that have been using those technology will be given a better grade just because they have already uh, they have already adapted to that kind of um, writing style and vocabulary of that particular platform. So that makes it very unfair and very biased. Huh? So different platforms, different grading systems will also mean, no, would also mean different sets of biases and unfairness. No? And uh, connecting to that one with reliability as well. Uh, let's, for example, um, let's go back to essay. No? So when we say essay, how about like for example, we have to resubmit. No, we we will resubmit. No, resubmit the 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 essay because it doesn't meet our standards. So it might receive a different score due to the variation na, and the AI interpretation, but of the same content. No, so ah, uh, kanasya. So it would really have the reliability when it comes to doing this one. So let's make sure. During assessments, we we just choose assessments that we could um, effectively and efficiently make use of AI. Not necessarily things like this when we need to do manual checking, especially for essays. No, okay. And then we have transparency, transparency and explainability, and of course, educator preparedness. No, so assessment, transparency, and a bit. Uh, explainability how would you be able to explain why the score of this particular student is 100 and this one is um um maybe 50 or 75 only no if uh you just ha uh, you just um you just copy pasted an activity 
and then place it there without even rubrics, without even a uh, checklist or without even a criteria for grading. So uh, transparency and uh, this, this becomes an issue, no? Like for example, I, this is a very good video. This is a very attractive video. So uh, for sure it's 100 points already. So you cannot explain that. No, you cannot explain that. Um, thoroughly, no, thoroughly. Just so, just so because um, it uh, an AI, an AI uh, platform was used maybe in grading them or in maybe in um trying to explain it to the student, no, and um educate educator preparedness. So this is also very uh, this is also very something that we should avoid as teachers because in here teachers may not be adequately prepared to use and an interpret ai driven assessments meaning no whatever ai gives us saman copy paste lang no so that makaingon sila personalized learning gihapon so again um there's no we there's no personal touch to it it's not contextualized so um how it is explained could could again go back to the issue of transparency transparency and explainability if we make use of this one for assessment. And then the next one is feedback quality. So who among us here no, always have a different feedback for our students or at least have tried giving different feedbacks for our students? Just so we could say, nakasulay po taong ko anang personalized learning. No? So in here, um, if we have like feedback quality, it's really canned. It feels so canned. And um, while powerful in many aspects, kay, uh, at least na atay mahatag na feedback sa atung, atung students, but they may not uh, fully grasp, grasp the, the, the essence of uh, of the student responses, like for example, katong essay, no? Kung kato siya, dili good siya, um, how, how we give feedback to them that are canned, dili good siya mo hit, or it could not even correct uh, our students, um, maybe, kanang pagkukulang, no? So it could not even correct that, or it could not even um, lead them to develop a uh, a, a better a, be, a better output or a better type of learning no so as a result feedback generated by ai may lack depth and contextual understanding because of that one and when we say generic feedback um it generates feedback on predefined templates as I, as i've said it's canned no and usually no usually um as uh, on the teacher's part when this is done because you have you don't want to think anymore of what to what to give or what to feedback your students because you are already over reliant when it comes to the use of ai no so uh, in there because of because of that one again it branches to different types of uh, assessment concerns and pedagogy concerns. No, um, again, there's loss of human expertise, meaning because it's kind nga, ay, pariha, yeah, it's personalized learning, pero pariha, the students will be discussing pariha lagi tagiingun. Unsay pasabot ani. So again, it goes back to explainability. So there are really a lot of things uh, that we have to consider, especially when we make use of uh, uh, AI tools for to generate uh, assessments, no, or at least feedback uh, for us. Okay, and this one is very, um, yeah, but controversial. But this is something that it's quite a heavy concern for us: academic integrity, no. So, um, when we have academic integrity, we also we have discussed this one for content, no, uh, like our students generating or producing assignments and submitting them like it was their own, no? And then here we are, no? We, because we don't know that any uh, any AI, a, AI platform that will actually um, generate that, then we, we are religiously grading them as though they have made it on their own. So it's actually unfair advantage, not just to the student, but also to you, no? And... Um, when we have that one, we we also talk of. Let me just also highlight some of the 
concerns regarding academic integrity in AI-driven assessment. Like for example, of course, no question about it, plagiarism. No, we have, have we have maybe um experienced that with our class cheating. No cheating when it comes to um students might manipulate or deceive AI powered assessment tools. Uh, cheating in a sense nga iyahang nawong ang naa sa screen pero dili na dai to siya dili na dai to iyang nawong nag deep fake na dai siya kay gasige na di ay panglantaw og laing content pwede na siya then originality verification so student become uh, work becomes more challenging no when ai generated content is prevalent no aside from the fact that uh, of course we we have our um apps to koan to at least to prevent uh, pl plagiarism. So hopefully you have started using that, no? And on the part of the teachers, there could be unintentional plagiarism, diba? as I have mentioned earlier. On the students' part, also unintentional um, pl plagiarism into their work because um, there was no proper citation, no? Uh, just really an, a, a mistake, no? Um, a mistake na there was no proper citation and then it was unintentional on the part of the students or the teacher. No? And uh, lastly is ethical awareness. No? So because uh, especially on the first slide, we have uh, highlighted that this might be, this is not the technical part, um, but this could be those of uh, ethical considerations over um, these uh, factors. Uh, so students may uh, over-reliance, especially on AI for generating content or assisting in assessments can reduce students' awareness of academic ethics. No? So uh, we also have to remind them that we're using this and then we have this in our university so that they would also be aware. So it's really it's really straightforward. We have to tell our students. No, it's not something that we shouldn't be telling them. We have to even show them, no, show them the results of their similarity and AI-generated content, so that they'd be able to, if that's part of your, uh, that's part of your policy, no, that you have, they have to resubmit for a certain, um, maybe percentage of, um, similarity or, um, AI-generated work. So they should actually have that one, so that, uh, they will be able to practice it also to mitigate academic integrity issues and concerns. Okay, so um, in here, so we have here. Uh, these are these are actually for assessment. So that would mean, uh, again, no. So I we we are really we are really trying to push that. Uh, it should be a collective effort of the college or the department when it comes to um, the sorry the mitigation portion, no, the mitigation portion and prevention portion of these to happen or for these to um, to always uh, to to flourish, especially in in the academy. Okay, so just so we'd have an idea of um, the things that we could do. No, when it comes to content, pedagogy, and assessment. So these are some of the solutions. So um, let's go back to classroom policies and, of course, checklists. So classroom policies, if you have your own classroom policies now, you must be able to place maybe one or two policies regarding the use of AI or generative AI in your outputs or in the in class presentations or whatever it is in the learning journey of the students and then uh, maybe a checklist for you as well as a teacher so that you'd be um also guided no because it shouldn't be that we become over reliant with our use of ai but we should also set our limits and we should have also control and management in in using it and then plagiarizing uh, plagiarism detect detection tool so we have turn it in for this year and what's good about turn it in is that it checks um the similarity that would actually lead to how plagiarized the work is at the same time it also gives um it also gives the percentage for ai generated content meaning if it's 100 percent, then it was copy pasted from maybe chat or something someplace or 
bisan asa, no? Because uh, when we say AI generated content, it might not be something that was from a real maybe from a real page, from a real source. It could be from uh, platforms such as ChatGPT. So it could really be detected. Okay? So hopefully magpractice na tagamit ana. And then assignment or activity customization. So there are very attractive um learning activities over there. Uh, AI could suggest to us very nice activities, no? Uh, learning activities for our course. But we have to customize it in a sense that uh, we have to contextualize it kung magamit ba niya or this could actually meet our objectives or our learning outcomes in the course, no? So it shouldn't just be copy-pasted. We, uh, we should actually also... Um, if, if these are major activities, learning activities, we should actually have our own sets of um, uh, criteria for grading or at least rubrics. And then we have educational initiatives. So uh, in, in here, so I hope, no, I hope this is uh, something that uh, the, the initiatives of uh, the Global Studies Center on this one, it's because uh, we would also want to support especially our, our open-mindedness or at least how we have embraced the AI framework. So hopefully, um, this could also flourish in your own um, colleges, in your own departments, your own initiatives in uh, combating um, these AI issues. And then... We have um, teaching critical critical thinking skills, no. So it shouldn't be it shouldn't be something that um, should be lost, no. Because uh, in the end, the end uh, the end goal for this is more of trying to develop their higher order thinking skills, and one of that is their critical thinking skills. So what do we do, no? So uh, we could actually do flip classroom no or flip learning what does it mean all explanations or all um all demonstrations in the form of videos or maybe pdfs or whatever they're all in our learning management system flip because when they come to the classroom or our physical classroom that is where no the real or the graded um activities are done so that means no uh when we say teaching critical thinking skills, they have to do their essays there. They have to solve the problems there. They have to do all those things inside the classroom, not anymore making these big projects or making these uh, big uh, activities as assignments on their own. So um, we still, we, we, we would just want to prevent them from using uh, AI, no, in making them. So why not make use of our time in the classroom for this one? What do we still have? We have human review and editing. So that's why it's also important that at least a person or a person or two in our college would be our QA when it comes to our content, our... Um, Dili lang si principal or si uh, Dean Tanan, no? But someone someone should be uh, responsible for this one so that uh, we should uh, at least, no? Uh, um, we, we are aware, teachers are aware also of how we should be able to um, um, comply, especially with uh, the guidelines with uh, how we, we have to make use of AI in generating content, in making use uh, of them as for assessments, and of course, in our pedagogy. Then we have, yes, we have diverse training. So hopefully by next, would it be next uh, next week, Sir, Sir Fed? We actually have, oh, plugging na ko, no? We actually have assessment and feedbacking. So you might want to, you might want to, to, to be a, a part of that one. And we have, Peer review and feedbacking. So it's still important that uh, that kind of activity uh, still exists in your course or in your in your topics or in your in your class, no? And then uh, I have here the three cultural sensitivity training, or maybe we have other classes that are uh, connected to this one: emotional intelligence training and 
maybe teacher guidance or a counselor would actually also help us out. So I, I believe there are there are classes already that's connected to this one because this will actually help us not to be um, jaded no? or actually have that kind of um, human touch in us. Dili mawala na siya. Because once we become so addicted to AI or digital technology, we become robotic. So this would actually help us out. And then... We have to encourage uh, originality. So uh, we should be able to uh, formulate learning activities that encourages originality. No, so um, and uh, balanced approach of hybrid or hybrid hybrid approach. What does this mean? No, personalization versus standardization. This might be something that has been battling that battling in your mind ever since no but we could have a balanced balanced approach for this one so hybrid approach as well and then human educator involvement so never be out of the picture no in 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 your course or in your it's not really nice to really be totally be out of the picture and of course transparency and uh, accountability no so transparency and accountability uh you, we, we that's, i have mentioned this we could practice like showing to them um their um plagiarized percentage and ai generated percentage because it becomes uh they become accountable to it magsige na lang ko ani resubmit og ai generated content no so kapuyon po na sila so they would be able to they would be able to develop na um having that originality no and also making it on their own no just making uh use of ai maybe for uh to enhance maybe vocabulary or grammar but not necessarily the whole content of um the assignment or the learning activity and then this one uh as i have mentioned earlier with flip learning we have to promote active learning so um we have to we have to allot classroom time to real active learning, not lecturing anymore. No, so it goes back to that one. No, so uh, we will have to have we we need to have these types of learning activities that will actually enhance teaching critical thinking skills, so on and so forth, inside the classroom when we're together with our students, so that um we can still no we could still. Um, develop develop their young minds or we could still develop how they would be able to acquire the knowledge and of course the skills in our class so with that said i hope listen or we we were able to have like i could pick that out and apply it in my class so for the rest of the other um for the rest of the other elements in the framework, Sir Dave will be the one to discuss it. So thank you very much. Thank you, Al. Um, I will continue to the second or the last uh, component in the framework under teaching and learning, which is uh, research. And literature is also telling us that among the many aspects in AI integration, in teaching and learning, research is the most affected part. So what are the different issues and concerns related to research? The first one is on quality and uh, accuracy of results. Because as we all know, generative AI collate data from the web from a, from a long period of time up to the recent time. If we are using free account, uh, the data that we could get from generative AI is until September 2021. And that means any data, regardless if that is fake or generated or accurate, are included in the data collection. And that means this data vary in terms of quality, accuracy, and reliability. And that somehow, inaccurate or low-quality research can mislead scientists and hinder the advancement of knowledge in the field. That's one, quality. Similar to 
this being discussed by Alfi on the content, there is also a question on the accuracy. Why? Because again, I will go back to the scenario that generative AI collects data from the web and generative AI cannot determine if this content is of good quality, is of accuracy, level of accuracy, and if those data are reliable. So that, therefore, there should be a mitigating aspect or action in order for us to validate quality and accuracy. And that is, again, validation. The second issue that uh, we have to consider in relation to research is on data privacy and security. The use of generative AI for research may involve the collection and analysis of sensitive data, raising privacy and security concern. Again, generative AI collects data from the web. And sometimes when these data are not supposed to be taken and maybe this data are not anonymized or this data are, are not supposed to be shared and that therefore this information is included in the content generated by uh, generated by artificial intelligence so protecting research data and ensuring compliance with data protection regulation is very essential to prevent data breaches and unauthorized access because all the information we got from generative AI are basically also coming from the web. And if those information coming from the web contain uh, personal information or sensitive information, those data are technically uh, gathered and, and included and uh, harvested and inputted in open AI databases. Uh, uh, in the situation for the chat GPT application. The other is ethical consideration. I think this is very self-explanatory. Um, arise in the generation and use of AI-generated research, such as fabricated data that provides a biased result. I've, I've tested this. I experimented this. Uh, tried to really validate on the different articles saying that you can produce a full paper by just simply using generative AI from topic creation to hypothesis generation, even asking, give me a data of this, and then you summarize this, and then you provide recommendation. Generative AI is capable of doing that. And that ethical issues may include responsible use of AI, adherence to research ethics, the pot potential for misuse, such as generating fake research papers. I think you also read an article that there was this uh, very reputable university. They tried to withdraw, they tried to withdraw the diploma that they give because they found out that a thesis was generated by generative AI. Bias and fairness, this was also partially mentioned or discussed by Alfie. Generative AI models can inherit and uh, perpetuate biases presenting in their training data, impacting research results and recommendations. Why bias? Because again, uh, generative AI cannot determine, cannot check if the data is accurate and if the data is validated or even if the data, again, is recent or if the data if the data is validated by uh, a certain criteria or certain uh, rubrics so bias in research can lead to distorted findings reinforce stereotypes and undermine the credibility of the research outcome especially if you don't know how to uh, to prompt or to ask research, uh, I mean, generative AI in relation to your research, it may provide you information that may not be applicable in the recent time, or it may be biased to a certain context. So for example, you just simply say, uh, describe, describe the role of, describe the role of uh, this kind of scenario. And then, because generative AI do not 
fully understand what you are trying to instruct to them, they will just simply give a very generic responses or very generic descriptive that may not be relevant to the Philippine context. Another issue is on reproducibility and uh, transparency. So AI-generated research may lack transparency in methods and processes, making it challenging to reproduce and validate results. So for example, uh, if you will just ask, uh, I need a data, something like this, to validate my hypothesis. And if someone will ask you on your methods and the processes on how you came up with your data, and because you cannot declare that your data is gotten from a generative AI, then that's a very problematic result and a problematic analysis. So lack of transparency can prevent, again, the peer review process, preventing other researchers from building upon or replicating the work. Uh, as, as you know, many journals now is actually asking an actual raw data. Uh, they wanted to see a CSV file. They wanted to see your entry. They There are even journal management system that will look at what date you inputted your data to your Excel sheet because they wanted to validate if your data are really actual and not coming from generative AI. So loss of human expertise, so automation of research tasks using generative AI may reduce the need of human researchers or domain experts. I also tried this uh, just again for experiment. Um, I asked generative AI, I have this kind of uh, something like a problem, a research problem. Provide me, provide me a, a theoretical framework that is not yet existed applying the principle of this and that and so on and so forth. And it's very wonderful, but it's so difficult to explain because again, you don't know where this information is taken from or the reference or at least the references and in the references also you can even i mean chat gpt can provide you reference and when you look at also the reference actually when you sometimes uh, way of validating you can actually ask chat gpt on the reference or at least where where or or related literature and when you double check it and if the journal is close or it's not open meaning you have to pay then don't include that in your analysis or don't include that in your content because again it will be subjected to issue on uh, transparency on on data privacy and some other concerns uh, over reliance researchers may become overly reliant on generative AI for various tasks, potentially reducing their critical thinking and problem solving skills. It was also explained by Alfie. Validation challenges. Uh, in what way? Validating the authenticity is also is always an issue. Uh, similar to my situation a while ago, that all the data provided by generative AI is actually coming from the web. And uh, the integrity of this is also challenging because um, generative AI is not capable of validating its integrity and validating its authenticity. Uh, researchers may face difficulties in confirming the credibility of AI-generated results and ensuring their compliance with research standard. So there are many steps on how to mitigate all of these, actually, which I will be presenting later on. Then uh, intellectual property and uh, authorship. This is the one I'd mentioned to you sometimes generative because it is very powerful. It's machine learning, neural network uh, algorithm. Sometimes it can get in to journals that are supposed to be paid or with subscription and that uh, generative AI can gather data from that and uh, which technically or or uh, ethically they're not supposed to get information from those because content from the from that journal is with subscription so there's a lot of disputes actually regarding to this in terms of ownership and attribution of ai generated work uh, there was a time that uh, science direct i think science direct science direct releases a an announcement that you can co-author you can co-author uh, a generative AI or a chat GPT in particular. And then I think towards or later, 
uh, they try to explain that it is not ethical to utilize or to include chat GPT. There are many arguments. It's, that is why we're here because uh, we are also learning because chat GPT is actually improving and issues are also escalating and concerns concerns and so with the mitigation what is really the problem is like this uh when it turns to the platform the platform is improving when it comes to issues also it's also improving but when it comes to mitigating steps and how to fight against this it's not improving everyone is still learning okay so educational impact so the use of generative ai may affect the educational process, including the development of research skills in students as well as in teachers. Issues like, oh, why do we have to teach students? Uh, why do we have to? Why do we have to include grammar in the manuscript of research? Where in fact, students can use ChatGPT to improve grammar. <laughs> why do we have to teach students on hypothesis generation? Where in fact, ChatGPT. Chat GPT can help you generate a hypothesis. Things like those. Okay. So students and emerging researchers may face challenges in acquiring research skills, critical thinking, and problem solving if they really extensively on AI generated content and data. Just like Alfie, our common common mitigation activity here or, or practice is really set an ethical standard. Currently, the university is doing a lot of effort. It's now uh, in the process of uh, our BOT uh, approval. And then later on, the university will come up with, with a, a generic uh, ethical guideline and practices. And then it has to be articulated by department. We cannot create a uh, 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 one standardized policies and guidelines because, again, it is based on appropriateness and applicability to certain discipline. The use of artificial intelligence is very relative to the discipline in teaching and learning. So say, for example, uh, uh, using generative AI in grammar or for grammar checking, is obviously, or generative AI in hypothesis generation is obviously, or maybe not applicable in the English writing because part of the learning outcomes of that class is students should be able to uh, apply critical thinking in generating hypothesis. And if they will use artificial intelligence, then what's the purpose of uh, including that in the classroom? But on the other side also of the coin, that we have to improve our research classes about that. So there's a lot of issues, no? And uh, uh, the quality, there should be quality control measures to ensure the responsible and ethical use of AI in research and to uphold uh, research standards and integrity. You may, you may ask, or for sure you are asking, sir, do we have an institutional... Uh, ethical guidelines now. Uh, as of the moment, we are still learning. We hope to release that in the next few months um, because um, we are waiting actually for the UNESCO's uh, articulation of the social and ethical guidelines for the education. Uh, just to show you that in the research uh, arena now, in many of the publications, like from Elsevier, many of the journals under the indexing of Elsevier, you need to declare, you need to have a disclosure in your, uh, in your submission, in your submission to the journal. Uh, they have a very long explanation about uh, AI policy for authors. There are certain levels. In other words, you have to cite and you have to disclose what activity or which part in the content is or utilize, utilizes generative AI and what specific activity. Say, for example, one of the statement here, during the preparation of this work, the author use what, what is the name of the tool, like ChatGPT, in order to, then you have to cite the prompt, specifically the prompt. So, 
For example, you will say, in order to improve the grammar, in order to, uh, to improve the clarity, or in order to, and so on and so forth. Because that will help. Uh, it will also, it is a disclosure that will help the journal if you are following the, if you are, yeah, following properly or um, um, implementing or, or following uh, ethical considerations and guidelines. Because if you will say in order to, in order to generate my specific question, that obviously it will give you a turn down from that uh, journal. No, so after using this tool service, the author reviewed and edited the content as needed and take a full responsibility for the content of the publication. So this declaration does not apply to and so on. So the 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 integration of chat GPT or generative AI in the area of research is also evolving. They also try to re-landscape. Before, uh, Elsevier also said that reviewers can use chat GPT in reviewing paper. But now many journals are saying that is unethical. Reviewers in paper should not use uh, generative AI to review a paper. I think that was mentioned by Alfie because again, that's part of some of the concerns in terms of it is very canned, uh, it is very robotic, there is no human thought, there is no more critical thinking in the area of research. Just to give you an example, in my class, I have something like this. Um, I, I, I advise, I advise a master's and a PhD student. I have some guidelines for them. I have something like this. For your draft, don't worry about the number of pages. Just write whatever you want in accordance with the flow above. Additionally, in your first draft, please refrain from using generative AI. I'd like the content to originate from you. So I have something I have to remind them. That's part actually of the guidelines, of classroom guidelines, that we have to tell our students that we understand and we know what is good and what is bad in using generative AI. I also have something like this towards the end. For this final ver revision, when I finally endorse them uh, for, for colloquium or for final oral defense. I have something like this. For this final revision, utilize chat, GP, chat GPT to refine your manuscript, potential prompts. I even provided them prompts. Potential prompts include enhance for better clarity, correct any grammatical errors. So submit to document versions, one before applying ChatGPT and another after utilizing ChatGPT for revision, then upload in my soul. So if if you have something like this, I'll tell you students are, there is this uh, a mind setting among the students that are uh, the teacher, the teacher is really familiar with, with chat GPT or any generative AI and that he or she or the teacher is monitoring the progress of the students. So I hope th that is one of the practice. Um, in the future, we'll be sharing a lot of practices with you. We are still uh, gathering and collating this because we cannot... Uh, the GSC, the SOL team cannot uh, do this alone. We need help because we have different discipline. We are coming from dif different discipline and different discipline also have different appropriateness in terms of the integration. Let me proceed to the other side of the framework, which is in terms of operations and management. Uh, we look at the we look we, we look at that there is opportunity of uh, any generative AI in the operations and management in terms of reference. So some of the issue here, uh, generative AI can produce text that appears coherent, but it may not always be accurate and reliable. Again, it goes back to the idea that all the content. Uh, taken from or provided by generative AI are also coming from the web. Plagiarism is also one uh, as far as far as uh, um, reference is concerned. Then ethical 
consideration. The use of AI in administrative tasks may raise ethical concerns related to privacy, data security, and responsible use of AI. If we do not know and understand the art of questioning chat, chat GPT or generative AI, it may provide us a very limited context in our understanding. So AI may not fully understand the specific context of the university. We, you know, we have, uh, for example, uh, um, we have the Silliman spirit. How can we, how can we embed Silliman spirit perhaps in our memo? Mm. The, the Silimanian way, how we can do that in personalizing our students or in making our memorandum or in making our announcement, how can we do the Silliman way? So that's the point that is being uh, highlighted by, by Alfie. Lack of accountability, again, if there are errors in the content, it's so difficult to blame. We cannot blame actually uh, generative, uh, generative AI because again, they are also getting information from the web that ChatGPT or OpenAI or BARD or any uh, generative AI platform cannot validate also their content. Training and understanding administrative staff should be adequately trained. Uh, I, I thank all the directors and the deans who sent their secretary during the, the staff uh, workshop. Uh, I heard that they enjoyed, but that was too short. And we hope to have more training among them on how to make sure that they have acquired the basic understanding in terms of the social and ethical use of generative AI in the workplace. As a writing assistant, uh, we know also that generative AI is a very good writer. Uh, generative AI is a perfect writer. AI-generated content may struggle to capture the appropriate tone or personalization needed for different correspondence. Uh, during the training with the staff, I, I demonstrated to them the different scenarios, scenarios on responding email if you are happy, responding email if you are angry, responding email if uh, you are very sad, responding email as if you are shouting, things like those. We have to learn all of those so that we can also mitigate and, and, and integrate personalization and right toning in our correspondence. Lack of context, AI may not fully understand the context and specific nuances of each communication. Again, if we do not know how to prompt ChatGPT or BARD or any other generative AI, we will be lost in the context if we are not talking or if we are not discussing generative AI well, if we are not providing correct information, complete information, and clear instruction of what they want so that they can provide me a better, or so that they can provide us a better context. Uh, quality and accuracy, it was also explained, and sometimes AI may misinterpret the intent of the email or the correspondence. Uh, for example, situation like this, uh, in your email, usually you will just click reply, and then you, you will have a long thread, and if you will just say, you will copy only the later part or the last email, you will just copy that and you will instruct AI, uh, AI, this is the email, construct a response to this. It may miscommunicate to the recipient because there are prior or exchanges of information that AI needs to understand also. Okay? So miscommunication or misinterpretation can lead to misunderstanding, conflicts, or misrepresentation, especially in sensitive or critical situations. So the same tone and personalization when it comes to writing assistance, uh, the lack of context, and let me proceed to organization or organizing. Organizing, this refers to uh, activities that ChatGPT or generative AI can make a schedule for you, 
can categorize a scheduling planning to you and others. So AI may struggle to accurately organize and categorize documents based on the context and relevance. Sometimes the misorganized files can lead to difficulties in locating, accessing, and managing important documents, potentially hampering administrative efficiency. Because take note, if there are if there are data and information provided by generative AI, for sure it is difficult to locate or the exact location of that information is difficult actually to locate. Because again, these are summarized. In layman's word, these are summarized information also taken from the very huge and uh, vast amount of data that were filtered and harvested from the web. So data privacy and security also is a concern under organizing together with accuracy and reliability, the loss of context, and as explained by Alfie, it's over automation. Um, for the staff, perhaps we introduce to them how to use how to use generative AI on posting a social media announcement. Well, maybe for the first few posting, one, two, three, you may enjoy it. But later on, for many times, it's too robotics. It's it's too automated. It's the same words, uh, the same way of the construction. And, and it, it, it doesn't appear good anymore because it looks very the same. No, toning, uh, the way it is being written, uh, very similar. Because again, if generative AI, if you don't provide a very contextualized instruction or prompt to generative AI, they will only provide you a very generic and not shall I say, not contextualize information or content in accordance to what you want. So lack of accountability, this was also explained by uh, Alfie, errors. You cannot blame, uh, you cannot blame also chat GPT if there are errors uh, taken. Uh, errors in AI-generated content organization can make it challenging to assign accountability. So data retrieval efficiency, a AI generated systems might not optimize data retrieval efficiency. Why? Because inefficient data retrieval can lead to lead to wait, uh, time wasted searching for documents, potentially impacting productivity and responsiveness. Uh, training and understanding is similar to what uh, Alfie was mentioning. And so with the uh, user proficiency, uh, staff need to understand this is always an issue because uh, not all staff are very familiar. That is why we are calling them uh, when it comes to the proficiency. So integration with uh, existing systems, integrating AI into existing document management systems can be complex. Uh, while we are teaching on the use of turn it in in my soul that is not applicable also for our staff because they don't have a learning management system they have to learn switching from one application to another application before they could come up before they can maximize the use of generative ai when it comes to reporting i'm now down to the last part which is on the reporting component of the ai integration in Selimani university so this is basically very similar to the one especially being explained by alfie accuracy and quality uh, plagiarism lack of context understanding over automation transparency and accountability training and understanding so in general as far as reference writing assistant organizing and reporting what are the remedies what are the checklists that we have to understand and at least be familiar on the preventive measures into this uh let's try to discuss one human oversight and review so always maintain human oversight when using ai generated content 
always review the work or the content, always verify the accuracy and quality of AI-generated references. So a simple example to this is make sure that it is available and accessible online. If the content is not accessible, if you cannot find the content provided by generative AI over the web, like in Google, then start asking yourself that those may not be necessarily uh, accurate. And of course, it is a question of uh, quality. Uh, clear usage guidelines, as I mentioned, soon um, the university will provide a a usage uh, guidelines of integrative AI that must be articulated again by the different departments, colleges, and even to the classroom. That guidelines will include also ethical considerations. When can we say? Because one activity may be one activity may be ethically acceptable by a one discipline, but not ethically acceptable by other discipline. So that is why we have to uh, make sure that. We are not too uh, prescriptive in our guidelines because we wanted also to maintain academic freedom among our teachers. Uh, training and familiarity, there is a need for everyone to be part of our training journey in order for us to be familiar with all of this. Quality assurance should be embedded, customization and fine tuning. What does it mean? So for example, if you are getting content or for example, you are getting a related literature, you don't just simply copy and paste that into your document. You need to uh, customize it according to your need. You need to fine tune your document um, because again, it's too, it's too robotic. You will see, ako personally, I'll tell you, no, if you will provide me content, I can, by, by, by my eyes, I know that these content are generated by by generative AI because there is algorithm because, you know, before I teach, I teach algorithm and it appears to me that my mind is running <laughs> that, ah, oh, this document, the way the words are presented is following this kind of algorithm and so on and so forth. Uh, transparency and accountability. There should be a need to consider data privacy and security, balance automation and human input, bias mitigation, user proficiency and support, feedback mechanism, and continuous improvement. Um, so moving forward, what 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 are expected to us uh, when it comes to all of this? No, uh, when it comes to issues and concern. Because uh, we wanted to trigger all, all the minds of our educators and help us think more on how we could come up a very good and acceptable following all those issues and concerns in coming up uh, an institutional and clear guidelines as to the policy, as to implementing rules, and as to classroom, very classroom specific policy, and even perhaps suggest uh, assessment and rubrics uh, criterion in the use of artificial intelligence. So what are what we think are ways to move forward after learning the issues and concerns is uh, please continue to attend training, uh, professional development related to uh, generative AI, especially in your own discipline, uh, help us also from help us in the Global Studies Center to learn more. What do you want to learn more? Uh, but I'll tell you, it's not just a one-day learning. No, uh, many is actually telling me, sir, can we can we learn in just one day all of this? We cannot learn generative AI, pedagogic of this, the research component of this, we cannot learn that. Let's just learn this little by little and put that into uh, our mechanism when it comes to training and development. We can also look at attend training. We will be offering also, I'm still developing this, uh, the, uh, learn the art of questioning generative AI. It is also one way of mitigating those concerns presented, issues presented by Alfie and uh, especially in, in the research on how to prompt 
and how what 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 are prompts that considered acceptable and not acceptable ethical and not ethical so we have to learn that uh, in order for the content generated by AI is contextualized into our own learning or into our own environment. Then continue, let's continue to collaborate with uh, artificial intelligence experts. Uh, we have to uh, have more partnerships. We can partner also our students. Students may be a little advanced when it comes to AI. <laughs> They are more resourceful in finding AI. We can partner with them. Uh, we can collaborate with them in learning. Uh, set ethical guidelines and policies. This is actually our main agenda to really come up with a set of policies, set of ethical guidelines and policies. We already have a set of data privacy policies in the university. Please make yourself be familiar with all our with our policies, uh, data privacy uh, and protection policies in the university. You can actually download the guidelines. Uh, continuous monitoring and evaluation. We'll continue to monitor uh, during the Dean's Conference. It was suggested that uh, the office, the Global Study Center, will continue to monitor and evaluate our integration process. Alfie also emphasizes on addressing equity and uh, accessibility. This was also raised during the Academic Council. When it comes to uh, equity and uh, accessibility to generative AI among our students, among our teachers, among our staff. And we wanted to make sure that uh, whatever we have in the university that is accessible, not just to a group of people or a fraction of our student. Uh, teacher engagement and communication, this is very vital when it comes to the um, integration, <clears throat> the integration process in, in such a way that uh, generative AI can leverage to address, uh, to address this uh, in terms of engaging and making sure that human touch will not be lost because it is very necessary. Remember in our uh, introductory slide that there is a call for a human-centered approach to the integration of generative AI. With all of this, uh, this will we hope to harness the transformative potential of generative AI while ensuring um, responsible and equitable use in the educational context. Another item that we thought of moving forward is uh, empowering also our students. During the Academic Council, uh, one of the members is asking, are our students are also empowered? And uh, that uh, reminds us to also evaluate our syllabus for computer fundamentals, our syllabus for empowerment technologies, teaching our students in relation to AI literacy, computational thinking, data literacy, ethical considerations, collaboration and creativity, real world applications, continuous learning, ethical AI design, and digital citizenship. One, as you all know also that uh, the administration of Dr. Makan is advocating the responsible use of social media and at the same time on mitigating information disorder, malinformation, disinformation, and misinformation. So we want to empower also our students and I hope our teachers also will encourage your students to attend uh, workshops, seminars uh, that we are offering actually for our students. We've been talking already with the with the uh, student government, with our uh, weekly ceremonial to help us promote responsible use of technology in teaching and learning. With that, um, as educators, you know that we play a vital role in shaping the future and embracing innovation. As you all know, we revise our vision, mission, and one of the goal there is embracing innovation and technology by staying informed important issues and concerns 
it is helpful to us to open our mind to be a guiding facilitator to our students in the next generation so that aside from us teachers can understand and can understand and respect ethical boundaries of this chat gpt or of this uh, generative ai so that everyone will be empowered and our commitment we have to commit ourselves to ethics at the same time balance it with innovation and education and that i believe it will pave way the way for a brighter future where generative ai serve as a tool for positive change enhancing and enriching learning experiences of generations to come with that dagang salamat for attending this afternoon session if you have questions uh, let us know let us discuss let's continue to um let's continue to discuss this and collaborate uh, so that we could come up hopefully soon as we can come up with a clear guideline and a clear statement that we can stipulate in our classroom as far as generative ai is concerned daghang salamat So at this point, uh, you may now, uh, we are open for questions or clarifications. You may use the chat box, uh, Zoom chat box, if you have questions or queries, or you can simply raise your hand and unmute yourself. So this segment is the open forum for issues and concerns uh, concerns of generative AI. Okay, we have a uh, mom, Sai Floor Putong. Sir, Sai Floor. Ah, uh, sir, sir, sir. Sorry, sir, sir. <laughs> May ngapon. Sir Dave, uh, Mama Alfie, and Sir Freddy. Um, actually, it's uh, UREC. I'm one of the members of the UREC. And together with her, actually, see Attorney Golda. Uh, there was a question, actually, last year. Pa, uh, one of the members actually asked if we're going to embrace ba or reject uh, uh, AI. Or probably, katunga time, dili pa common ang chat GPT. But this year, very common ang putsa. And... Uh, and that's one of the issues we are actually trying to mitigate now. Uh, again, uh, Dr. Dave gave us the man and uh, Mam Alfie gave us a lot of uh, measures no, or ideas in order to mitigate no, uh, by the, uh, with the use of AI, especially in research. And actually, I, we noticed in uh, UREC uh, that there are a lot of, I don't know, of uh, uh, Chat GPT na good to generate exactly copy paste lang good from Chat GPT because when I check the Chat GPT, let's say in the section of ethical consideration, exactly the same. So when I first actually see the uh, the content of ethical consideration, mito na ano ko na murag uh, na amaze ko because it's complete. But again, uh, if, if I try to read it, mito it lacks personalization, it lacks the context, and it lacks muraga. Uh, coherent in uh, writing. So, more than ChatGPT, mo just enumerate it, then put it there, though it's complete in terms of elements and under ethical consideration. But again, for me, medyo, uh, wala na discuss fully and in short, medyo dili sa personalized or wala na customized sa, uh, sa iyag na paper. So, they, Dr. Dave, my question is, can I mag, ano ka, mag, uh, totally, uh, copy paste from ChatGPT that can be a form of plagiarism right no it's not it's not a form of ah copying itself the content provided by ChatGPT is not plagiarism but it could be a possibility that the content provided by provided by ChatGPT is a content that is under a copyrighted source and that the ah, issue okay. will come in C copying per se 
is not plagiarism. Even even if you will say, uh, even if you will say the full content is copied and pasted from Chat GPT. Okay, so the act of copying is not, but that's the one uh, explained by Alfie that the issue now is is that because there might be a room that or opportunity that the content provided by chat gpt is under from a copyrighted clause or a copyrighted document in other words it is not ethical <laughs> and it's not proper to simply copy and paste the content provided by provided by chat gpt that is why sir if you notice turn it in turn it in does not categorize plagiarism that is why they have a separate category called ai generated content okay. did, okay. did you get what i mean plagiarism mm -hmm. content is different from ai generated, generated. Content. Okay. the two different that's two different things so my suggestion to Yurek is some of the checklists that I know, do we have already a disclosure statement in our process? Do we have that part in our in our document required by Eurec? Do does Eurec has a process to determine if the the manuscript is AI generated content. And if Eurek can see that this content is AI generated content, what's the decision? Because it's not also nice to say that ah, if we find this and that, that they are they are using chat gpt is already a no what if they just use chat gpt just to improve the grammar right or what if they just use chat gpt or they use another ai for graphics but the content is really coming from the idea or mind but because the the author or the writer is not good in designing so he he or she just use an AI generated or uh, uh, an image AI generator. So my suggestion really is uh, based on based on my reading, sir. Um, guidelines is very important uh, as far as utilization. And pinaka basic is you should have a checklist which part like the one I showed to you. Uh, there is a disclosure statement. In some journals, they have a long list that you have to check. I mean, the author has to check. Like, uh, do you use this? That you only use this. You use ChatGPT in improving the grammar. You use this tool for clarity. You use this tool in in hypothesis generation. Pag makitaan to siya, o dili na na siya dawaton. Something like that. So there's a lot already, uh, many journal, many publications already releasing uh, their guidelines. Maybe uh, Eurek also can adapt that and maybe look at which one is uh, applicable to us. Thank you, Sir Dave. Definitely, that's one of our agenda in the next NAMO meeting. Thank you. Uh, we have another question. Thank you, Sir As Saiflor. And then we have Mom Golda. Hi, everyone. Uh, Hi, salamat I'm very happy that I had the time to uh, watch the entire session and listen. So just two points. I'm quite excited that the university is really having a proactive stance on developing AI. And I'm very happy to provide insight. So apart from Siliman, I'm actually working for an a human rights organization called Access Now. So we have been engaged in the UNESCO process a lot and we're also in the process of engaging with various governments on AI policy. So that's one. And then number two is more on the exciting part. Uh, I don't want us teachers to be afraid of AI. So 
uh, for future webinars, I'm hoping that we can excite teachers by showing them what AI can do. So some of your examples today, uh, Sir Dave, for example, hasta ako na-excite for nakuyawan po ko because I teach legal writing and research. So so right now, I can even feel that I'm using the I'm afraid of AI mentality because I'm back to handwritten exams. So it's quite old school and it's quite sad. So even seeing what are the possibilities uh, and maybe we can invite uh, the team to have a, a webinar, for example, for law professors, that, that would be great. So we can maximize the technology instead of being afraid of it. So thank you. Uh, thank invitation you. and then an, also an, an offer to support whatever is being done by the university. Thank you, Attorney Golda. Uh, actually, this talk will balance the positivity of uh, generative AI because uh, <laughs> for, I think we have eight sessions for this semester talks about generative AI and all those topics are the highlight, the plus points of generative AI. And before we will, the, the idea is before we will end the semester, we wanted the teachers to, to think also the, the negative parts the negative points or the not so good points of uh, generative AI, if misused, so that they would know how to how to mitigate and at least uh, uh, be familiar that if they don't know this kind of issues and concern, they might call and they do not know that ah, sayup de unta to dapat de unta ko naka nakabalo. Thank you, thank you, uh, Attorney Golda. Um, we are actually uh, hoping to come up with a set of guidelines uh set of guidelines uh, actually I'll be I'll be attending a UNESCO policy making sometime in November uh for the ASEAN to articulate social and ethical guidelines of uh, uh generative AI so we are waiting to that because hopefully we can uh come up our own so that uh we can invite and encourage our teachers that I like your statement that uh so so the teachers will not scare, no? And dilip ba mahadlok? Di gudapat mahadlok actually. Thank you. Hopefully, we can invite you in the future. So, do you have? Any more questions? Uh, can they so use think, the chat? Yeah, I think there's no more questions, uh, Sir Fredley. I just want to invite others and please tell tell our colleagues the next part, the next uh, session is on the specific strategies of generative AI in using generative AI in assessment and feedbacking. And uh, after that, I think after that, sometime November also, there is another very focused topic on generative AI in research and productivity. So uh, that's very interesting. Maybe uh, Sir Cyflor also, I invite you also Sir Cyflor, because uh, I'll be sharing some some re-landscaping, especially in the journal, mga ethical protocols of generative, generative AI. Again, there's no prescription in many articles that I read, there's no prescription because it always uh, refers back to the discipline. Because there are some, say for example, what I'm referring to that is there might be specific guideline. Okay, for example, in, in a journal, may be applicable for a technology-related paper, but not applicable for medical-related paper. So things like those. Okay, Fred. Okay, so at this point, uh, I would like to share my screen. I hope you are able to see now my screen. So. Again, to get your certificate of attendance, all you need to do is evaluate uh, the upscaling session for today. So this particular uh, account for the evaluation is uh, good for 
SU teachers. So all you need to do is just go to the faculty training room and then click that virtual classroom in your uh, personal menu page in my soul. And then as you notice, we have the upskilling recorded videos. So these are the recorded videos for the first semester upskilling. So you can see also that we categorize it by theme. We have generative AI or a uh, gen AI. So we have here the upskilling sessions. This is the pre-recorded sessions. And then we have my soul upgrades we have here. And then we have responsible use of technology. So all you need to do is just basically uh, open this particular upskilling topic and then you will see uh, the recorded video clips for those upskilling session. And then to evaluate, uh, the upskilling session for this uh, for this afternoon, all you need to do is just click download certificates section. And then you just scroll down. Okay, I hope our internet connection is quite good. Okay, if you click the download certificate, so all you need to do is we have here, this is the current upskilling certificate. So this is open. Uh, starting today and then all you need to do is just simply answer this questionnaire so basically you are evaluating this upskilling session and then this is lock so which means that for those present uh, attendees in this particular upskilling will be the one to answer this particular survey questionnaire and then if you are done with this particular uh, evaluation form, then you will get your certificate of attendance in this session. So this is good for faculty or SU teachers. And on the other hand, okay, since I already enrolled you uh, with your respective uh, virtual classroom, on the other hand, for our SU staff, You can access uh, the your certificate of attendance in our RSOL account. So you just uh, specifically uh, log into rsoul.su.edu.ph. And then you can also click here for our upscaling program. So you can click uh, this particular link and then it will give you a list of trainings. And then also the pre-recorded upscaling sessions. So we have intended for our SU staff. And then you can download your certificates by just clicking the download certificates sections. And then all you need to do is the same as the faculty or SU teachers, you need to answer the questionnaire. And then you have, uh, if after answering that particular questionnaire, then you will receive your certificate of attendance. So that is uh, in getting your certificate of attendance for this upskilling session. And this is very important for us to organize properly for our future webinars or upscaling sessions. At this point, uh, Sir Steve, can you share the screen? Can you go to the next slide? Okay, so we have here our upscaling session. So for the first semester, so you can also visit that one uh, in our uh, faculty training room. There is a link there that it will lead you to the list of upscaling uh, sessions. And then all you need to do is just register to that particular upscaling session. Uh, can you go to the next slide, sir? So if ever you have, uh, this is our contact information in the, in the Seoul Global Studies Center. So we have our Facebook page. So just like our Facebook page, and then for you to be updated for the events that we are gonna make with this particular uh, semester. And then we have our YouTube channel. And then you can also call us at 420-1901-LOCAL417. 
And then if you have questions or clarifications, just email to soul at su.edu.ph. Can you go to the next slide, sir? Okay. So I guess let's have a photo opportunity. Uh, sir Steve, uh, can you do the honor? So I will just remove this. Thank uh, you, sir Fred. Okay, thank you. So may I request everyone to turn on your uh, camera if your connectivity allows you. Okay, please hold on for our five seconds for the best uh, smile or the best shot. Okay, one, two, three, smile. Again, one, two, three, smile. Okay, thank you everyone. Back to you, Sir Fred. Okay, so in behalf of the Global Studies Center, thank you very much for attending this upscaling session and we will see uh, each other November 7th. Okay, for another upscaling session about generative AI using assessment and feedbacking. So thank you very much for spending your valuable time with us this afternoon. Thank you.